Good evening, everyone. With the Polar Patriots war bond almost upon us, I've decided it is a perfect time to look back at the previous war bond, which there are now three, and give a brief overview of their skills, abilities, and what I think of them. And also, we can get caught up. I'm going to imagine that Helldivers is going to keep doing war bonds every month, so we'll have to keep pace for democracy. Starting with the first war bond, Steel Veteran, and the first weapon that you get is the Liberator Concussive. Now, as of the making of this video, all the weapons have been changed or buffed since my initial thoughts of them. So we're going to retcon a couple things that I said previously. Now with the Liberator, uh, this thing is actually pretty unique and I'm kind of sad that I never really got around to really using it that much. Um, they did buff the damage of it slightly in the most recent patch, but it actually has a pretty unique aspect to it that not too many guns have. It has a very, very high stagger modifier. If you look at the description of the weapon, it says that it shoots a concussive blast that staggers enemy. And this works on the grunt enemies, the small bugs, the devastators, all that kind of stuff. It makes them flinch really hard, which you really only see that happen with like high grade stratagems like the auto cannon and the arc thrower. Of course, the dominator and the eruptor are in there as well. So to have such a you know, relatively low damage gun do so much flinch and stagger to enemies is very interesting for, you know, a lower tiered weapon. Uh, overall, um, it's not bad. I don't, I didn't like hate it or anything. It's fine. And I think if you were in the difficulties of like one through five, one through six, somewhere around there, this will probably get by pretty fine. No problems. Leading to the second weapon in the Steel Veteran. Now this is a weapon that I love oh so much. And honestly is the king of this war bond in particular. It is the Senator. This is the big iron, the revolver. It was always in our hearts as a hell diver, but recently it received a pretty massive buff. They gave it a speed loader. So when you empty the magazine, you can reload all six shots all at once. And he also gave it a little small damage buff as well. What do we have to say about this other than greatness? The Senator is beloved to all hell divers and everyone's been having the big iron on their hip, even more so. I got no bad words to say about the Senator. It's pretty good, pretty good weapon. Moving on. The last weapon is going to be the Breaker Incinerary. Now this is basically a fire shotgun that actually received a couple buffs here and there. Uh, most notably is the fire damage increase and the fire tick damage got buffed as well previously, but I digress. What this shotgun lacks in damage, it makes up for in damage over time. Now the Incinerary Breaker itself isn't quite a showstopper. Um, you'll shoot people and they more than likely won't die until you hit them three, four times. But the burning damage, that'll get them. You'll definitely notice this on the weaker enemies, uh, the lower level bots, the lower tiered bugs. When you set them on fire, they will probably just die. Medium armor enemies, not so much. Fire damage doesn't really affect them that well, but I mean, they do take damage. It's not like they don't feel it at all, but they just don't catch on fire as easily and let, let, let the damage affect them as easily. So, uh, I mean, it's not bad. Definitely more useful against the bugs than the bots, I'd say. But if uh, you can even tag any part of the robots, the lower grunts, they will instantly just burn out and die after five seconds. So it is pretty useful for ad clearing. And we have to talk about the grenade because that is technically a weapon in the battle pass. And you get the incinerary grenade in a steel veteran. Um, Not really much to say, it's a pretty decent AOE. It sets people on fire. Um, everything that I have to say about the breaker incinerary applies to the incinerary grenade. Um, it'll set things on fire. It's good against the grunts. After about five seconds, it should kill whatever it's on fire, unless it's a medium or high tier enemy. It doesn't really affect them too much, at least not with one dose. And that's about it. Um, you can take out bug holes. You can take out the fabricators. Not bad. We're gonna talk about the Jar 5 Dominator. Um, this is a shotgun. Well, not really a shotgun. It's more of a bolt rifle, more than anything. It looks like a shotgun though. I like it quite a bit. They've nerfed the damage from 300 to 275 and reduced the stagger slightly in the latest update. Um, I've been using this thing quite a bit and it still feels about the same. So I can't really say anything bad about the Dominator. It still dominates, no pun intended. I like using it against the robots more than anything because it has a nice little stagger effect on it and it can deal with the scout striders by shooting their feet or shooting their front plates and just blow them up that way. Very powerful. Against the bugs, not so much because uh, since the magazine isn't really that big and it 
uh, shoots one shot at a time. Not very good at crowd control because there are a lot of bugs that charge you all the time. But it can take out the chargers. It can deal with the brood commanders pretty easily. It can deal with the spitters pretty easily by shooting them directly in their weak spots. It is a very nice weapon. And I can't say enough good things about the dominated. And we will talk about the boosters uh, at the end of the video. Now moving on to the cutting edge Warbond. This one might be one of the most interesting Warbond. First up, you get the Laz Sickle. Now this thing is almost as beloved as the Senator. It is just a very solid weapon. It is an energy weapon, first and foremost. So if you don't want to overheat, it basically has infinite ammo. But not only that, it has an extremely low recoil, making it ideal for taking out robots. You can just laser beam, no pun intended, their heads and pop them quite easily. And these are the Devastators, the more heavily armored, medium armor guys. You can take them out in about 10 to 15 shots. And of course, against the grunts, even less so. Really don't have anything bad to say about the last sickle. It is very good, very stable, very accurate, very versatile. Not so much in the damage sense, but in the sense that you can just laser beam accurately and efficiently within reason. All the enemies in your week. Now going on to the next set of weapons in the cutting edge battle path. We have the stun grenade. Now this thing is pretty versatile now it has been nerfed in its latest iteration it was able to stun bile titan but uh that was a little bit too broken and it can no longer do that but that is the only nerf that it has received since then so you can stun uh hulks you can stun chargers you know brood commanders uh spitters i don't think you can stun tanks because they're a tank pretty sure it doesn't work on them i could be wrong anyway um, yeah, very high utility stun grenades, pretty useful to have in your loadout if you're running something that needs to get some distance from the enemy, or if you want to call in a quick stratagem on them, not too bad. The next weapon is one of my favorites, similar to the Senator and the last sickle. I also have everything good to say about the Punisher plasma. This is a energy weapon. It is a shotgun. Technically, uh, you do not have infinite ammo. Um, and I did receive a big buff in the latest update um basically they increased the velocity of the energy round and they increased the damage drop off so you can do more damage at greater ranges stuff like that it's not too bad it can deal with large groups of enemies pretty easily it has a nice little aoe decent rate of fire um it can easily take out the scout striders the shield devastators, the rocket devastators, any kind of devastator. It has a lot of stagger and that's against the bugs as well. Um, the one thing you'll notice negative about the Punisher is the magazine size is not as big. You'll be reloading very often because it definitely takes, you know, a couple of rounds to take out groups of enemies. It doesn't have the most damage, but it, it always gets the job done eventually. And of course, you're going to have to get used to the uh, arcing grenade shotgun kind of effect that it has on it but other than that very nice moving on to our last two weapons in the cutting edge battle pass we have the laz dagger now this is a energy beam pistol much like the sickle or oh, not sickle excuse me the sight and this also received a slight buff in the latest update um I'm not going to spend too much time on this thing I don't like it it's I mean it's fine it's just a beam pistol so you have the benefit of not running out of ammo with it if you don't let it overheat the damage on it is pretty lackluster since it is a secondary weapon in a very weak one at that and i'm not a huge fan of the dagger um yeah i'd rather just use anything else but this to be frank but uh yeah you know is what it is and the last weapon in the cutting edge battle pass is going to be the arc 12 blitzer originally i was extremely hard on this weapon i didn't like it at all caught a lot of flack in the comment section from me not liking this weapon that much and not understanding the mechanics or whatever. You know, so be it. Opinions are opinions after all. But I can say they have buffed this blitzer to be very, very fun. They did one thing and one thing only. They increased the rate of fire and that's all they needed to do to make this weapon extremely fun. Um, it has almost, I want to say double the rate of fire than it had before. It feels like double with how slow it was before. Um, you're able to clear out large groups of enemies. It can chain to enemies as well. Um, it, it could always do that before. Um, very good against the bugs. The bots are a bit tricky because they can shoot you, so they don't really need to get that close to you. 
and it is technically a you know shotgun so still effective against the bots but you'd have to get a lot closer to do that damage to them um against the bugs you're gonna like it you're gonna like it against the bugs a lot nothing but good things to say about the blitzer it's efficient with its ammo because it doesn't run out of ammo um it does decent damage it has a good rate of fire now i had a lot of fun playing around with this thing night and day different now moving on to the last battle pass currently anyway we have the democratic detonation and going by the first weapon we have the adjudicator another weapon that i was very hard on when it first came out and for good reason this weapon was a marksman rifle and it was pretty terrible as a marksman rifle and i think most of the people sort of agreed with uh, it being a little bit weird and weak or being in that category. And I, I know I didn't really like it too much. Um, had way too much recoil for it to be a marksman rifle. And they have since changed it into auto rifle. So it sits with the, you know, Liberator Penetrator and the Liberator, Liberator Concussive, you know, in that category. And they uh, increase the magazine size or not the magazine, the mag count, how many rounds you can carry in battle. And they've reduced the recoil of it and made it sort of a you know an auto rifle and as an auto rifle i can say it's it's not too bad it actually does a lot of damage it has medium penetration they didn't take away that so it's pretty decent um i'd say the main thing that you're going to notice with the adjudicator even after they changed it uh buffed it or whatever is the magazine size being 25 instead of 30 and the recoil is still a little bit much but since it does double the damage of a liberator penetrator at least on paper um that's probably justified uh you of course can sit and crouch or prone to get the recoil down a little bit more you're wearing uh, that armor set but I digress. Overall, not bad. Definitely a lot better than it was before. Moving on to the grenade that you get in the Democratic Detonation. Thermite grenade. And um, well, it's not super great, but it is really good at one thing in particular. It can burn through heavy armor on enemy. That is all it does. It has a very small blast radius. It technically has a pretty long fuse time, but it, it does do damage when you throw it and it triggers, has like a burning over time effect, and then it has a quick detonation of that. Uh, primarily, you're going to use this to take down uh, tank, hulks, chargers, etc. Stuff that you would, you know, need a little bit more heavier firepower to deal with. I'm not a huge fan of the thermite grenade, but I can say it is useful at that one thing that it can do. And that's about it. Overall, not bad. Moving on to the second page of the de Democratic Detonation, you're going to have another weapon. It is the Eruptor. And I'm going to be very blunt with the Eruptor. From my initial review, when the Eruptor first came out, I was very satisfied with this weapon and I was I was singing it's praising that is no longer the case they have changed this weapon a decent bit since the initial release and it is not that good anymore uh on hell divers unfortunately so um let's let, let's just rip off the band-aid they've reduced the ammo by half so it now has six mags instead of 12 which 12 was a bit much for this thing um it is very clunky it has a slow chambering but what it does do is a lot of damage until yesterday when they nerfed it again um they took away the shrapnel effect that the eruptor had it used to shoot out shrap metal in all direction in like a five meter blast radius or something like that it used to be very good at crowd control because you can shoot under people you can shoot behind them and shoot around them and you would kill all the low level grunts and even damage some of the high high tiered uh devastators or uh whatever but they've uh, taken that ability away and decided to just buff the damage by 40 so it no longer has an explosive yield of shrap metal it now just gets 40 damage added on to the explosion which uh, in the footage that you're going to see is going to be pretty devastating. It can't really do the crowd control that I like to do where I shoot like under them and like around them to kill everybody in the group. Um, it does still have a blast radius, but it's pretty small now without that shrap metal effect. And uh, yeah, that kind of really took the wind out of the Eruptor sails with the ammo being half and it doesn't seem as effective anymore with the shrap metal being taken away and it's still pretty clunky to use they really wanted to nerf down the eruptor uh i i don't know it sucks it does suck i mean the weapon itself is it's still usable but it just sucks the way they handle this thing uh they make it so fun and so good and then just to rip it away after like a week or two is uh annoying but it is what it is moving on to our last weapon well last two weapons rather 
excuse me, we have the grenade pistol. Now this is a weapon just like the Senator, which is, uh, I got nothing bad to really say about it. It does a very good job at what it's supposed to do. It's a single shot grenade pistol. It has a pretty decent AOE. It can break bug holes. It can break the fabricators. It can, you know, do decent damage to large crowds. It's pretty good utility. Um, I would use this thing if you don't want to use a stun, or not a stun grenade. If you don't want to use a grenade that has an explosive yield, you can use your grenade pistol as a supplement and you can do what you need to do. It's not bad. Pretty short and sweet. Um, just like the Senator, very good utility. And the last weapon we have so far to talk about is the crossbow. Now this thing did get a buff, but it's not super great in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's not the worst weapon in the game. It was definitely pretty weak before when I reviewed it and it is a little bit better now with the velocity change and stuff like that so your cross bolts will fly farther a lot easier to lead targets and you know stuff like that but it still feels kind of lackluster because uh it's not that damaging um it kind of like it pesters the enemy more than anything um i said this before on my live stream that you should probably use this thing in the lower difficulties like I wouldn't go above level six with the crossbow where you start running into problems because enemies start getting more armor and there's more, you know, bulks of enemies and it doesn't really have the stopping power to deal with all that. So, uh, yeah, it's it's fine. It's not I'm not, you know, being mean on the crossbow. I just would take it into certain difficulties, but not other difficulties, if you know what I mean. And that kind of wraps up the weapons and grenades of the battle pass or war bonds, I should say. Let's quickly go over the boosters that you get, and then we'll wrap it up with one extra thing that I forgot to mention. In the Steeled Veterans uh, battle pass, you have the flexible reinforcement budget. This reduces time until new reinforcements are granted once they've been depleted by 12 seconds. So basically, if you're on a mission and you run out of lives, you have to restock your one life. This re reduces that time. Then we have the confusion booster. Reduces the amount of enemies being summoned by bug breaches or bot drop. This is in the cutting edge battle path. And uh, that it's pretty descriptive, um, so you'll be seeing less spot drops and less bug breaches if you have this one on. In the last one so far, in a democratic detonation, we have the expert extraction pilot. Reduces the time for it takes for a shuttle to reach extraction by 15%. So when you're trying to end your mission and trying to get you know, back to the main ship and get out of there. Um, it usually reduces it by 20 or so second, give or take, unless you have a modifier that it takes longer to extract and then running this will counteract that by 15%. These definitely aren't like top tier boosters, but they're nice to have if you have extra slots for other things. And lastly, um, I want to talk about one thing in the cutting edge battle pass. There is a unique armor that you get, which reduces your arc damage by 95%, meaning if you sit under a Tesla tower or if you get hit by an arc thrower or arc blitzer, you will take 95% less damage. And this is currently the only armor piece in the game that can do that. That being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more like this one. The Polar Patriots come out tomorrow if you're watching this video on the release day. And uh, I'll have another video like this one.